Welcome to the Extreme Broadband Engineering product installation training. In this session, we'll look at the DI2KV drop isolator. We'll explain how AC power flows in a home, talk about the importance of a good ground, explain what is a drop isolator, and why a drop isolator is needed. Let's get started. Before we talk about the drop isolator, let's take a look at how the power utility is connected to the home. At the pole is a power transformer that converts the high line voltage down to 240 volts AC, which will be used in the home. At each transformer, a ground is established, and at the house is a power meter. From the power transformer to the power meter are two 120 volt AC lines at different phases and one neutral line used for the power return path. The neutral line is bonded to the power ground. At the power meter, the power utility establishes the ground. This provides safety by taking any faults to ground and also provides a ground reference. All other utilities such as cable and phone bond to the power ground using their own separate attachment to the power ground. The outer shield of the coaxial cable is now bonded to the power ground through the bonding block and is at the same voltage potential. Bonding keeps all the utilities at the same voltage potential as power. The power meter is connected to the circuit breaker panel which establishes individual power circuits within the home. In this example we're showing one circuit that is run to the TV. From the circuit breaker there are three electrical wires run. A black which is hot, a white which is neutral, and a green which is ground. From the cable ground block, the cables run to the TV. Through the TV tuner, the power ground and cable shield again come in contact with each other. The normal AC flow goes from the hot leg of the transformer, through the power meter and circuit breaker panel, through the hot or black wire to the TV set. It then travels back through the neutral or white wire, through the circuit breaker panel and power meter, through the neutral back to the transformer. There may be times when the common ground that the power utility establishes is no longer a good ground point. This can happen due to poor soil conditions such as rocky, sandy, or very dry soil where the ground rod does not make good contact with the soil. No longer good ground, there could be a difference of potential between the different utilities. When this happens, each utility could be at a different ground potential. This can cause a voltage drop across the coaxial cable shield, which results in the current flow on the shield of the coaxial cable. Now some of the return AC current flows on the coaxial shield back to the transformer, along with the normal neutral path. Some of the impairments that this could cause for cable TV services are hum where visible lines roll up through the picture on analog channels. Or digital tiling and high BER on data services. When a bad common ground is suspected, it's always best to have this looked at by the power utility or an electrician to have them repair the problem. If they're unable to correct this due to soil conditions or as an interim fix, a drop isolator can be used. The DI2KV drop isolator acts as a decoupler and blocks DC and low frequency AC from passing through while only adding about a half a dB of insertion loss to the other frequencies. In this example, we're showing AC traveling on the shield of the coaxial cable. By installing the Extreme DI2KV drop isolator, the AC flow is stopped at the drop isolator. With the DI2KV drop isolator installed, the AC flow is normal and signal impairments are eliminated. Let's review what we've learned in this training on the DI2KV drop isolator. We looked at how AC power flows in a home, 
explained the importance of a good ground, explained what a drop isolator is, and why a drop isolator is needed. Thank you for viewing this product installation on the DI2KV drop isolator. For additional training topics, see our website at www.extreme-broadband.com.